Hey there! Welcome to the CircuitMess JD Build Guide. In this video, you will learn to assemble your very own DJ mix table and hopefully learn something new along the way, or just brush up on the skills you already have. So, you got your JD kit in front of you. The next step is going over all the components included in the set. In the box, there should be a creator's booklet, two plastic bags with all the tiny components you'll need later on, the display board, five acrylic casing parts, a USB-C cable used for powering the device, the main circuit board with a pre-inserted SD card, two speakers, seven round plastic knobs, these will make mixing a lot more pleasant. Now let's check out the bags with tiny components mentioned earlier. The first bag should include three slider potentiometers, a headphone jack, three plastic slider caps, two small button caps, an 8-pin header for the display, four brass spacers, six adhesive rubber feet. And now for the second one, a micro SD card reader, two long plastic spacers, seven rotary encoders, 13 metal nuts, a shorter plastic spacer, two push buttons, five big metal bolts, 11 medium metal bolts, and seven small metal bolts. And that is everything that should be included in the box. In case that something is missing, please contact us at contact at circuitmess.com. Send us a photo of everything that came in the box and we'll get back to you as soon as possible to resolve the issue. You will also need some tools for the assembly. This includes the following, a standard Phillips screwdriver, a cleaning sponge, and a soldering iron stand. And the main tool you will need, the soldering iron. This model has a temperature regulator, which you should usually set to about 250 to 300 degrees Celsius. In case you are a beginner or just need a refresher on how to solder, here's a quick guide. After the soldering iron has heated up, place it on the pin so that it's touching both the pin and the little plated area on the circuit board. Next, add some solder. Not too little, but not too much. The solder should melt evenly around the pin. After that, you can move away the soldering iron and repeat the process for the next pin. Okay, now we're ready to finally start soldering. First, take the main circuit board and the headphone jack. Place it on the top left corner of the board, then flip the board and solder all five pins. Next up we have the two push buttons. They are placed in the smaller black circles on the bottom of the board and should click in place. Now let's go ahead and solder them. Nice work, but we're not done yet. Next we have the slider potentiometers, placed in the large rectangular spots on the left, right and middle of the board. Then we're going to solder all three of them. Now we have the seven rotary encoders. Their placement is marked by these black circles and should click into place easily. With all seven of them in place, let's flip the board and solder them.
Now we have the 7 rotary encoders. They are mainly used for selecting different effects, navigating the menus, on to the next step. Take the display board and the 8 pin header. Insert it through the pinholes and solder just the first pin. Now we need to check out if the pins are perpendicular to the display board. If they need to be corrected, take the pins and the display board in one hand and a soldering iron in the other. Adjust the pins while simultaneously melting the solder joint. Try to do so quickly before the pins get hot. Then we can go ahead and solder the rest of the pins. Now we're going to take the display board we've just finished soldering, the main board and four brass spacers along with four bolts and nuts. Place the screws and brass spacers on the display board like so. You can tighten them by hand, but we'll make sure to tighten them afterwards with a screwdriver. Repeat this process three more times. Place the display board on the main board and make sure all the pins and screws are aligned correctly. Then place a metal nut on the back side of the board and tighten it with a screwdriver while holding the nut in place. Repeat this for all four screws. Then solder the pins on the back side of the main board. Congratulations, you're done with the soldering part. Next we're going to quickly check if we have soldered everything correctly. Make sure to have a nearby power outlet ready. You will also need a standard USB charger. Plug one side of the cable included in the box into the charger and then plug the charger into a power outlet. Connect the cable to your device. Now you should be greeted with the input testing screen. By clicking and turning all the knobs, buttons and sliders the diagram will slowly turn red. Note that you won't be able to proceed if you don't try out everything on the board, so make sure that you've clicked everything. After that, the JD will boot into the main firmware, but we'll leave that for later. For now, disconnect the device and get ready for assembling the casing. Take out the plastic acrylic casing parts. Before assembling the casing, we need to peel them. Use your fingernails to scratch off the protective layer and then peel it off. Satisfying, isn't it? Repeat this for both sides and then for every plastic part. After peeling them, they should all look clear instead of bluish like before. Next, take the front casing plate and the main board. We're going to assemble the two with six small screws. We're also going to need the screwdriver for that. Place the casing plate on the main board and start tightening the screws. They should go into the three sliders we have soldered previously. After that, your JD should look something like this. Then we're going to place all the plastic caps. Take three slider caps, seven knob caps and two small push button caps. The slider caps should fit snugly onto the sliders without using much force. Now place all three of them. Next the plastic knobs. They have a semicircle cutout, so make sure to align it properly with the knobs on the board. 
Finally, the two push button caps. They should make an audible click when placed and you may need to use some force on them. Alright, your JD looks almost finished by now, but there is still a few steps left. Now is a good time to peel off the protective layer from the display. Pull off the green tab from the display while being careful not to damage the screen. Let's put our JD aside from now. Take the casing's side panel and three black plastic spacers and also one metal bolt. You're going to screw the black spacers together so that the smaller spacer is sandwiched in between the two longer ones, as shown. We're going to need the screwdriver for the next step. Take the screw and place it through the casing. Screw on the black spacer from the other side. Now tighten it all together with the screwdriver. The next part is the back casing. Take the two speakers and a total of 8 nuts and 8 bolts. Place the speaker onto the plastic casing and insert the screw from the outer side. First, tighten one nut by hand and then tighten it afterwards properly with a screwdriver. Repeat this process four times for each speaker. Okay, the speakers are looking good. Next, take the main board along with the speakers. We're going to connect them to the main board. Connect the left and right speakers accordingly to the connectors on the main board. We're done with that for now. Now we're going to take the bottom casing and two adhesive rubber feet. Stick them on the casing on the protruding part and apply some pressure on them. Ok, now we're going to combine all parts of the casing. Take the main board with the speakers, the bottom casing with the rubber feet, the leftover side casing, the side casing with the black spacers, a screwdriver and a metal bolt. Place the side panel with the black spacers flat on the table. Take the bottom casing and place it so that the rubber feet point towards the main board. Place the main board and speakers. Finally, place the last side panel on top of everything. Now comes the tricky part. You're going to have to align all parts of the casing so they fit into the cutout holes. It can take some time to get this right, so don't get frustrated if you don't get it on the first try. When everything clicks into place, we're going to place the final screw and tighten it with the screwdriver. For the finishing touches, we're going to place the remaining rubber feet so that your JD doesn't slip around on the table. Place them in the four corners of the bottom casing. And there you have it! Your JD is now finished. You can go ahead and power it on. As before, you connect it to a standard charger and it should make a cool sound right from the bat. Before the fun starts though, remember to turn off your soldering iron and let it cool off for at least 5 minutes before putting it away. And also peel off the screen protector if you haven't already. You can navigate through the menus with the center knob and finally start mixing. 
you are now ready to start your own DJ career. Show off your creation to your friends and family and have fun mixing. If you need help with how to use the JD, you can take a look at the JD usage guide linked in the description. The JD comes with an SD card preloaded with tons of cool tracks just waiting to be remixed. But in case you want to mix your own songs, do the following. Take the SD card reader included in the box. Now eject the SD card on the bottom side of your JD. Insert the SD card into the reader. Take off the plastic cap and plug it into your computer. We have a guide linked in the description on how to transfer music to your JD, so make sure to check that out. Now you know everything about your new DJ mix table. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and make your next musical masterpiece. Don't forget to check out circuitmess.com for more amazing projects like this one. See you in the next build video.